Good morning. Good morning. You're only showing half of your face again. I know. Well, you're doing it purposely? Why? Should I do this side? I don't know. Uh, good morning, everybody. What up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Remember people used to say that because of that Martin show? Not like that, though. Like, what's up? Like that? I think. No, I don't think so. Oh. What up, people? That sounded it's, cooler. It's Monday evening for us. Tuesday morning for y'all. Yeah, you guys are in the future. So, mm. uh, yeah, it was a cool day today. Um, I had a couple visitors, right? Yeah, I had a... I had a nice little meeting with one of the sisters, and then we had a meeting with a, a couple from the church. So yeah. We were busy for a few hours. Then I glued rocks together. Yeah, you glued a few rocks together and did some... You had little projects going on, and mm -hmm. I had my cleaning day today. And we ate pork rinds. We did? What do you mean? You just ate one like 60 seconds ago. Babe, that was crumbs. It's what uh, crumbs of a pork rind? Yeah, but you make it sound like I ate pork rinds. I just did. A few cr so you're the one that ate my pork rinds. That's what happens. I was wondering why I was eating crumbs. There's Thank more at the store. Thanks a lot. Those were mine. There's more at the store. I'll get you a case. You always eat my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cool. Anyways, you know what was really cool? Hmm. I wasn't talking to you. I'm oh. talking to them. Anyways. Respect. <laughs> See, he doesn't like, he does not like. What do you mean I didn't like it? I said respect. Anyways, he doesn't like when it's done to him, but whenever I. Wait, why do you say I didn't like it? I liked it actually. Made me happy. Anyways. Going back to what I was saying, so today, David, I'm trying to talk. I'm just showing him this is going to be gone by the time the video is done. Oh my gosh. Yes, he drinks water. Ooh. <laughs> He's a water drinker. So you were telling him? Anyways, so I happened um, to notice that there was a book that had been sitting here. Um, that you bought the other day when you went to go buy your canvas and it was I think you had been looking for that book for a long time because it's an old it's an older well, book. I've seen it but I just I never had the money on Amazon to get it yeah every well, time I see it would be like 15 bucks or something yeah and I think we found it for like seven bucks or yeah. something like that at as we were coming out of the aisle at Michael's I think it was no Hobby Lobby Hobby Lobby yeah, and we were like, oh, the five love languages. Yeah. Yeah, five love Gary languages. Gary Chapman. Yeah, it was, you know, and he's like, oh, my God, I've been wanting this book. And so we were like, let's just get it, you know. And I had seen it there, and I was just sitting here, and I'm like, you know, since I don't have my glasses, you guys know I don't have my glasses. I was like, can you read it? And that's what we've been doing since the couple left. Um, mm -hmm. and I told him just, just read it. And we've been reading since, so he's been reading it out loud and that's what we've been doing. We've been reading the book together. Um, it's been really interesting. I think we're on chapter five. Yeah. Yeah. We're on chapter five now. Well, we're about to start chapter five. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the third one, but, um, it's really, really good. And we've been able to interact and the, every, every chapter has like a, a question at the end mm -hmm. where we can ask each other something and interact. And we've been kind of learning a few things about each other, which is really good. Um, and just kind of coming together and answering a few questions and yeah, it's pretty good. It's good pretty stuff. good. You guys. Yeah, it's a really good book. So if you haven't read that, I know it's an older book. It's been it's around. It's not that old. They mentioned Facebook in it. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying it's older as it's that that book's been around for at least over six years, seven it years. Must have been revised because it's talking about Facebook. It's talking about Netflix. It's it's it been, mentioned Netflix. It's over seven years because I remember many years ago. But you know they they always revise it. Yeah. Because 
yeah. I don't know, but it's been around for quite a while. But anyways, um, if you know you're a married couple or something, maybe you guys should pick it up. It's a it seems like a really good book. The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Yeah. Or if you're about to be married, maybe you should mm. read it. Yeah, good book. Good yeah. book. But um, anyways. Um, I didn't have necessarily a Bible verse, but something that is very important, and you've probably heard me say it a lot of times at the church, and I kind of wanted to talk about that. Is, okay. um, and I learned this early on, and this is for those of you that are, you're, you're, you share the gospel with coworkers, with family, um, with people around you, and they're, let's say they're not receiving it, and maybe this will speak to you in a way that will help you in reaching people. You got to change your perspective. And, um, and if you are doing this already, well, praise God. Now this just gives you confirmation that, that you're doing things correctly in the right way. That's going to lead people because number one, to reach people, to reach souls for Christ, it is not about winning an argument. You know, some people think they're going to go debate with the atheist, with this person, with that. Uh, they say that they're this, so you want to debunk them. And and it becomes not about winning a soul. It about, it's about you being right. So, number one, that is a wrong, wrong approach. Oh, yeah. This is not about you winning an argument. This is about Jesus winning a soul. Mm -hmm. So, take yourself out of the equation. Uh, anytime you throw yourself in the equation or I throw myself in the equation... Um, I'm setting myself up for failure and possibly setting up somebody else for failure that will reject Christ because we came at them wrong. Yeah, yeah. So that is something that's, that's important. Now, this is something I learned early on when I went to Bible college through correspondence while I was in prison. And this is the part you've heard me say before, is that whenever we share Jesus or preach Jesus, or give a Bible study, um, we're speaking from two different mountains. Yes. You know where I'm going now? Yes, I do. Okay. Mount Calvary. Yeah. yeah. Mount Sinai was where Moses received the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. He went up to the mountain, God spoke, the mountain shook, and Moses was given the law. Laws are there to condemn people. That's what the laws are there for. So the second mountain is more important than Mount Sinai, which is Mount Calvary. That is where the cross of Jesus was at. Jesus had to carry his cross out of Jerusalem and go up to Mount Calvary. Or In, 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 in um, Latin, it's... Calvario, which that's how we say yeah. skeleton, right? In yeah. Spanish. Calvario. Calvario. Mm -hmm. well, that's what it means, you know. Calavera. Yeah, yeah. Calavera. So, what do I mean by that? Is you're always going to, every person, every preacher you hear, everybody, they're preaching from one of two. They're preaching from Mount Sinai, which was giving law, or they're preaching from Mount Calvary, which gives freedom. You know, and this is going to be the basis of who you are and how you approach people, you see. Because if you preach from Mount Sinai, you're bringing condemnation to people. If you're preaching from Mount Calvary, you're bringing freedom to people. Mm, that's good. A whole different approach. Um, how is this relevant? I'm going to explain to you how this is relevant to me. Okay. Okay. When, when I first started preaching, I was in Terminal Island Federal Prison in Long Beach. <clears throat> and um, as I started to hang around with the brothers in there, uh, it got to the point where the brother that was leading, Brother Mario, he tells me, David, he goes, you've been here for three months now. Because um, I had just gotten out of solitary. I was in solitary <clears throat> for a year before that. I hit the yard. I was finally able to be in the yard. Praise God. And um, I just hung around the brothers for like three months. And I was just soaking it in, soaking it in. And Brother Mario approaches me and he says, Hey, I want you to preach. You know, and um, 
I wish I could tell you an amazing story that I preached and the whole prison just repented. Uh, actually, it was a little windy. Uh, my sermon blew away. I stuttered the whole time, and I pretty much never wanted to preach again. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm called to preach. I, I stuttered through the whole thing. And um, I lost my... I never my... believed that you can actually stutter until a little while ago. Oh, <laughs> when I was reading? <laughs> and um, my paper flew away. I had so many notes, I kept losing myself. In the middle of my sermon, I'd be like, uh, where was I at again? Uh, where was it? I forgot what I just said. It was just weird, right? I don't mean like I could literally stutter, but I was like, I was a stuttering style. Yeah. Of, you know? And uh, it was bad. And I, in my head, I'm like, Mario was never going to ask me to preach again. That's it. And uh, after that, he goes, hey, you did good. I'm like, come on, Mario. <laughs> that wasn't good. And he goes, hey, what do you expect? It's your first time. He goes, I want you to preach next week, too. And I'm just like, come on, man. It was horrible. Anyways, let's fast forward. Um, I was preaching every week. And one night they came at 2, 3 in the morning. And they took a bunch of inmates just out of nowhere. Just They came with buses and started taking inmates. you know. And one of the ones I was taking was Brother Mario. And he was our leader. You know, he was our leader. And, and um, I cried, man. I cried. We all met at the bench and we're like, everybody's here and Mario didn't show up and we realized he was taken. And um, it was at that point where we were just like, who's going to lead us? You know, who's going to lead us? And um, anyways, we all promised to pray about it and come back and meet at that bench in the evening. And then we met and I came and walked up and they're all smiling at me. I'm like, why are you guys smiling at me? What's going on? And they're like, all of us have been praying about it, and each of us individually, God has told us that you're going to lead us. I'm like, I'm the new guy. <laughs> you know, and um, anyways. My paperwork I, flew away. <laughs> yeah. So I started leading the group. Anyways, um, when I would preach... Once a week, I believe it was Thursday nights, because we all took turns preaching. We all had a night, a designated night, because the Mario would tell us. He would say, you're called to preach. He goes, when you get out of prison, you're going to preach the gospel. He goes, so you better get your practice now. He goes, I want you to preach like there's a thousand people. And I'm like, but there's six of us. I don't care. You preach and you preach your heart out. You preach like it's the last time you're ever going to preach. Like as if Jesus is going to appear and take his people right after your sermon. That's why I want you to preach. This is what Mar This is why I cried when he got taken, because he's the one that sparked who you see today. Wow. And um, so when I would preach, people would gather. You know, people would gather, and I'm just like, man, you know. And it was kind of like embarrassing because the other brothers would preach, and and like it would just be us listening. But when I would preach, people that weren't even Christians would start would listen. They started knowing what day I was going to preach, and they'd come out and listen. And it felt awkward, you know, because uh, you guys, I hate anybody exalting me. We only exalt Jesus, and that's it. That's all I exalt. It felt awkward. And um, I remember this one guy, he was not a Christian, you know, and he, he was listening to me. So after I told them, I said, I, I got to ask you something, man. He goes, yeah, what's up? I said, this is, this is kind of awkward. I said, but I've been preaching now for a few months, and every time I preach on Thursday, a little group gathers. Um, what am I doing different? Like, we all preach. You know, these brothers, they preach amazing. So I don't understand why people don't gather. I really want to know. I'm, I'm not asking to get a pattern. Like, I really want to know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I sincerely want to know. And this is what he said. He said, I've been in prison for nine years now. He goes, and every time I hear people preach here, they tell me I'm a sinner. They preach that I'm a sinner. They tell me I'm a sinner. He goes, you don't think I know? I wake up in prison. Every day is a reminder of everything I've done wrong in my life. He goes, so the last thing I need is some inmate preaching telling me I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. 
I don't need you to tell me I'm a sinner. He was, I need you to, he was, what I need is for somebody to tell me how to be free from it. Mm. And he was, David, every time you preach, it stirs something in me. He goes, you're not telling me I'm a sinner. He goes, you're giving me the solution. You're giving me how to get out of it. He goes, that's what, that's why people stop and hear you. Because you are showing us the way. You're not telling us who we are. We already know who we are. And then I realized later on when I joined the Bible, I wasn't even in Bible college yet. And then I, in, that, in that one um, course, I don't even remember which course it was. And it says every preacher preaches from one. You either preach from Mount Sinai and you preach condemnation and, and judgment. Or you preach from Calvary and you tell them how to be set free. And here's the thing that Jesus says. Jesus says, I didn't come to condemn the world. Yeah. He says, I came to save it. Yeah, I came to set them free. Yeah. He says, actually, Jesus, in his very first sermon, he says, um, I came to set the captive free and to give sight to the blind. You know, and uh, so uh, people know, guys, you don't have to tell people that they're living wrong because if they're living wrong, they already know it. Yeah. You don't have to tell them. Think about it. If you're a Christian, and you're a believer, and you live a Christian life, I'm not saying you're just lip service, but you truly live a Christian life. When you weren't a Christian, did you really not know you were doing wrong? Did, I mean, did you really not? Yeah. Um, I knew I was doing wrong. I knew I did a lot of wrong stuff. So nobody had to tell me I was doing wrong. Nobody had to tell me I was a sinner. Nobody had to tell me those things. Uh, I already knew because I know me. And it was like, don't tell me who I am. Tell me who I can be. Yeah. We already know right from wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And and people want to be told who they can be. Yeah. People want to know what can come out of them, you know? Who they can be and how they can be. Exactly. Yes. You know, can you imagine how frustrating that is? Is everybody just telling you what you've done wrong? Yeah. You're like, dude, I know. I know everything I've done wrong. Tell me how to do right. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of the times that's what people, they they need sometimes direction. And that's where discipleship comes. And a lot of the times we're too busy. And I, and I say we're, and I say that as a lot of the times Christianity we're too busy uh, being lofty or criticizing being judgmental or or jumping into assumptions yeah where we're too busy with all of that instead of just taking their hand and and showing them the way you know mm -hmm. and and it's important that we just show them the way and giving them direction so that we can give them a solution and how to get there instead of doing all of that um, yeah, yeah, that's that's the most important thing to do, um, and I think the best way to do it is by opening up the Word of God and just showing them, hey, listen, it's all here. Mm -hmm. It's your instruction manual and how to get there. Showing them where it's at, how to get there, yeah. giving them that instruction manual and how to get there. Sometimes oh. they just need to see it and and be that example for them as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, um, we're talking to a couple today, you know, and I remember I, I said, I said, listen, whatever we talk about today, um, we're going to start it in the beginning. We're going to base it out of scripture. I'm not going to base it on this is what House of Rest believes, or this is what Grace International believes, or this is what, no, 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 no. What does the Bible say? Because if you don't start your basis and your foundation and what the Word of God says, you're 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 gonna be offset. Yeah. You know, and, and you can't do that. Like a computer, a, a, a printers. You know how after a while you have to recalibrate. Yeah. And realign. Yeah. The. Yeah. What are they called? Whatever they called the. The the lines. You know, it'll do the yellow and it'll do yeah. the red, yeah. and it has to because if it's offset. Your, your letters come out blurry. Yeah. You know, so... The ink per dot and all that stuff. Yeah. Just, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, we want to make sure things are scriptural. We want to make sure things are correct and things are right, you know. 
And, and that way we can share Christ without, um, you know, a lot of times we bring people to Christ and we're like, man, God can save you. God can take that weight off of you. God can set you free. And they're like, really? And then they come to the Lord and, and boom, all that comes off of them. And then we throw on them heavier chains mm -hmm. of religion. Mm -hmm heavier chains of your church policies, heavier chains of your denominations policies. And they're just like, man, dude, I just gave up a hundred pounds and you just put a thousand pounds on me. Mm. What is that? Jesus came to set us free. You know, he came to set us free. And that way, that's why we need to preach freedom. We need to preach those things. And a lot of times we think, Let's 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 um, let's scare them into the kingdom. Let's scare them, you know, and tell them about hell and tell them about this and tell them about that. And don't get me wrong. That stuff is real. Yeah. Right. It's real. But you know what? The things of God are so much greater than the things of the enemy. Why am I going to convince you by telling you about the enemy? Why don't I convince you by telling how good he is? You know, it's like, it doesn't make sense. If you have a business, right? If you have a, a, a car lot and all of your cars are amazing, you don't buy lemons, you don't do nothing. Every car that has a problem, you fix it because you have a conscious. You're, you're conscious, uh, uh, no, not a conscious. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you don't sell lemons. You, you, you have warranties and guarantees and people know when they buy a car from you, it is not going to break down. And if it does break down, you're going to honor that warranty. Because of your credibility. Yeah. Because, yeah. And now across the street is another car lot. That guy, he buys junk. He buys, you know, radiators that, that are messed up, but he puts stuff in just to let it last a little bit. That way, when you take it on a test ride, you think it's okay. Not, not you not realizing 50 miles down the line, it's going to start leaking again by that time it's too late. He does nothing but sell lemons. Okay. So here's the thing. The car salesman that works in the good car lot, he can do two approaches. One is he just, hey, man, we have a warranty, you know? And he just talks about all these positive things, doesn't even mention that car lot. Because you know what? It doesn't matter because you have a great car lot. The cars you have sell itself. Yeah, they should. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they're warranted. They're guaranteed. They run good. The owner does not put junk out there. Or you can be a car salesman that all you do is talk about that guy's car lot. Mm -hmm. Man, that guy has garbage. You should buy a car for me because that guy sells this. That guy sells that. See, that's what we sound like. Mm -hmm. When we just condemn and condemn and condemn and talk about hell and demons and this and that, all, you know what you're doing? You don't believe in your own product, so you think you have to talk about that one. Mm. Wow. So all you hear is demons and demons and this and that and it is a part of the thing. That's why, hey, I'm not, yes, yesterday's video is about witchcraft. So I don't shy away from that, but my core is not that. Our core is Christ. Our core is Jesus. Not healing, not demons, not anything else. We're going to talk about Jesus. He sells himself. I don't have to be a salesman. But see, you know? what, 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 what people don't realize by doing that, you're actually devaluing yourself while you're giving that recognition yeah and that's what's sad is because you bring the quality of this down mm -hmm. and bringing quality that because you have now given that recognition because you have mentioned it so much yeah and now that has the recognition here while you've devalued yourself yeah. because now you look like somebody or something that has no credibility because of your morals. Yeah. The moral that you have now is of somebody who speaks bad of yeah. that. And that's not the person or the thing that you want to be. Yeah. So, and, that, yeah. and that's not good. I wouldn't want to do business with somebody who bad talks or who, who does that, you know? 
and that's yeah. that's and not good. It, There's it, no credibility. If I have if I'm working in this car lot and they have an amazing warranty, amazing background, amazing story, amazing testimonials, that's what I'm going to push on you. I'm yes. be like, man, this is an amazing car lot. You need to have a car from here. You need to see. That's the kingdom of God. There's so much to say about the things of God. I don't got time it to be scaring you with this itself. stuff. It and here's the thing. Why do I have to tell you about that? Because this is so good that by taking this, you never have to worry about that anyways. Yeah. Because you're going to be saved. That ain't, that ain't about you. So it's like that, that's, that is preaching from the perspective of, of Calvary. I don't got time to be preaching from Mount Sinai because there's so much about freedom. There's so much about forgiveness. There's so much about mercy. Yes, that stuff is real. Don't get me wrong. But this is what sells itself. Yes. Is Jesus Christ. You know, and and, and that's it. That's basically it. Like, I, I, I don't think I said it on video. The people that, um, that uh, study... Uh, uh, can... Uh, counterfeit money yeah you have talked about it on this yeah you have yeah but, i'll say it again anyways yeah, say it again anyways because uh, you said it a long time ago yeah counterfeit money uh people that that do this to study this fbi or whoever it is um how do they study so much there's always different counterfeit money being made so how can they always keep up with it it's like trying to keep up with computer viruses yeah how do you keep up with it and one time i don't know if it's true story or just the same but they asked them Man, you're an expert on counterfeit money. How can you ever learn everything there is about counterfeit money? Because they're always coming out with new ways of doing it. And he says, oh, you got it all mistaken. I don't study counterfeit money. Well, what do you mean? You're an expert on counterfeit money. He goes, yeah, but I don't become an expert on counterfeit money by studying counterfeit money. I become an expert from counterfeit money because I study the real thing. And when you know the real thing, then you know the fake. Hmm. I don't got to chase all that stuff. So in the same way, <laughs> I don't have to study Islam and this and that and those things. I'm conscious of it. I, I, I educate myself on the basics of it. But I, I spend my time on the real thing. Amen. I spend my time on the real thing because when you know the real thing, the fake just doesn't even affect you. You know, so that's my two cents. That's a good two cents, baby. Yeah? yeah. Maybe it was like 98 cents. 98 cents? Yeah, I don't know. That's good. And he finished his water. Ooh. He said he would. That's water good. is good for you guys. Hydrate. He, he drinks a lot of water. Hydrate. Not as much as I, sh I, I should be drinking a lot more. Drink water, it's right there. Why are you looking at it like that? So you can prove to them that you drink water. I do, you guys. I try. All I right. Try. So that's today's video. Um, that was good. You know what? A lot of people, I think, must have shared yesterday's or something because we have like 300 and something views on that thing. That's awesome. And I think that was such an important, important video. What, when we were doing it, I don't think it, I realized how important it was till I listened back to it. Yeah. Um, I went on my bike ride this morning. I did 10 and a half miles. And uh, part of it, I did it with a friend. But the other part, I was listening to the video, yesterday's video. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this stuff is powerful. That's awesome. This stuff needs to be heard, you know. And, and I'm like, I hope people listen. And I just checked. And it was like 300 and something views. So. That's awesome. And I hope you guys uh, took that challenge and went to go have coffee and and you know, sat down with somebody and told somebody that Jesus loves them and just every day, just every day, take that little challenge and, you know, just mm -hmm. tell somebody, you know, have a blessed day or something, mm -hmm. you know, continue doing that and get into mm -hmm. the everyday, um, just get into it every day of just, you know, is it a, is it a habit or just, just, I don't know, just every to day. Make it a part of who you are. Yeah. Just make it a part of who you are and just, bless somebody every day by just giving a smile or doing something it's so important so so important mm -hmm. you know it, it it really is a part of life it's part of who you are and yeah. it, it's a blessing when you can make somebody's day by just telling somebody that yeah yeah 
like today so, I, we really did enjoy meeting meeting with the, the yeah. couple and meeting with with um, who we met with today it, it's it's very special mm -hmm. be deliberate yeah 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 all right guys have a blessed day and we will see you tomorrow yes we will god bless bye